Speed, velocity, acceleration, these are terms in physics that you have to know. You've got to get them in your head. You have to memorize the definitions, memorize the units, and keep them all separate because a couple of months from now, you'll be answering the question incorrectly because you forgot this definition. You forgot this thing had a direction. You, forget, you forgot everything. So make sure that these definitions get stuck in your brain, memorize them, and I've paired them off so that hopefully you can get them a little bit better. Speed versus velocity, mass versus weight, velocity versus acceleration, vector versus scalar. Let's learn physics. Mass or weight, commonly confused, but they're not the same. They're measured on different instruments. They use different units. And there's an equation that relates the two when you cannot convert weight into mass or mass into weight. So first of all, weight in the left-hand side, mass on the right-hand side. Weight is measured on a scale, but mass is measured on a balance. They're different things, so they're measured on different instruments. The weight unit in the metric system is newtons, and the mass unit in the metric system is kilograms, but they have the same unit name in the English system. They're both called pounds, but to differentiate, for force and for weight, we use pounds force. And for mass, we use pounds mass. So you step on that uh, doctor's balance and slide the thing across. That's measuring in pounds mass. But you think it's your pounds force weight. It, they're not the same. The silly English system has now two units called pounds, one of which measures mass or inertia. And the other one measures the weight, the force of gravity. Mass is the amount of matter or inertia in an object that does not, does not, does not have a direction. But the force of gravity, that is down. So that does have a direction. Very, very different things. Keep them separate. And the relationship between the two is not a conversion. Weight measured in newtons down is equal to the calculated by using the mass in kilograms, got to use kilograms, not grams, kilograms multiplied by what I prefer to call the gravitational field strength of about 9.8, rounded off to 10 most of the time, newtons per kilogram, newtons of weight down per kilogram of mass. And uh, that, that commonly the G that's called, we call it gravity. No, it's not gravity. It's the acceleration of gravity or is the gravitational field strength. For this calculation right here, W equals mg is the gravitational field strength, the newtons per kilogram. That makes sense, right? And lots of other people would be like, no, it's the gravitational acceleration, meters per second squared, okay, whatever, but it's, it's, it's that. G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, meters per second squared, and that's how you calculate. They're different. Vector or scalar, they're two main kinds of measurement in our world today with this schema, uh, scalar versus vector. A vector has a direction and a magnitude. A scalar does not have a direction, but does have a magnitude. Some examples in our common world, and scalars are much, much, much more common than vectors. Most of the measurements that you could think of taking, well, they'll be scalars because they don't have physical directions in space, like north and south and east and up and whatever that direction is, and just a physical direction in space, that's a vector. Weight has one, it's down. Any force has one, weight is an example of a force. Velocity by our definition has one, but speed does not. And acceleration has it, but distance and temperature don't. Momentum has it by our definition, but mass and time do not. Keep in mind, you have two different kinds of measurement. One, the vector should always have a direction attached to it, and the scalar should never have a direction attached to it. Keep them different in your skull. Magnitude, that word right there, everybody gets confused. A couple months from now, it'd be like, what's the magnitude of the force? What's magnitude? Okay, it's just how big something is, the size of it. It's basically a number with units. You just you put a number and you put some units on it, and that is a magnitude. Hopefully it's an actual measurement, but that is how you do magnitude. Four kilograms, four kilograms of mass, that's a magnitude. 65 miles per hour, 65 miles an hour north. Well, 65 miles an hour north, uh, that's a velocity, but the magnitude of that velocity is 65 miles an hour, number with units. And uh, 120 newtons down, that's a weight perhaps. 120 newtons down, 
Well, the 120 newtons part is the magnitude of the force. It's the part, the number with the units without the direction. All of these measurements, ve 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 vectors and scalars, all of them have magnitude, but only the vectors have a direction. Speed or velocity, you think they're the same. You think they're exactly the same definition, but they are clearly not. Speed is the rate of covering distance. And velocity is the, is the speed with the direction. So velocity is a vector and speed is a scalar. One has a direction, one does not. The scalar uh, is the, just your speedometer reading. Your speedometer reading is your instantaneous speed. You put a compass reading on that, like northeast, southwest, that would be your velocity. And the units are both meters per second, but you differentiate velocity from speed by putting a direction on that velocity. And the, uh, the average speed equation, average, because there are several different kinds, is distance over time. It's the rate of covering distance. Now, average or instantaneous. Now, you can have average acceleration, average velocity, average speed. You can also have instantaneous acceleration, instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed. So this goes along with all of those things. Instantaneous is, well, it's the velocity or the acceleration at a particular instant in time. And for your speed, that would be your speedometer reading. It's the one you're most familiar with. It's actually technically the average over a very short time. And the average is, of course, generally over a longer time than the instantaneous. And if you want to, you can look this thing up in your car menu. Since the last time you reset that trip meter, you, it will automatically calculate the average speed by taking the Distance total traveled by the car on the trip meter divided by the total time that the car has been on running. Not moving forward necessarily or backward or whatever, just distance traveled divided by the total time that the car has been on for your average speed. Velocity or acceleration. These are commonly confused. You don't think they are confused because you know, they're, they're totally different, but I'll show you how I know in just a bit. Velocity is, of course, you know it's a vector. It's speed with direction units of meters per second. But acceleration, it's also a vector, but it's the rate of change. It's the rate of change, the rate of change of velocity. And that velocity has to change in order for there to be an acceleration. Meters per second squared is the common unit, but I don't like that. Meters per second every second is the one that I prefer. And here's the equation for it. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, right? So it's divided by time and it's the delta V, Delta stands for change. Delta V divided by the time. And the delta, anytime you see a delta, you're going to take the final minus the initial. It's the difference. So take the final first minus the initial. And I know that these are commonly confused because I've watched my students confuse them all the time. But this term right here in English, fast. You walk to this, walk up to the sweet Corvette Z012 in, in a parking lot. And you're like, oh, check out that. That is a fast car. Um, actually, no, it's not moving at all. It's just as slow as every other parked car in this parking lot. So what, what do we, oh, when you look at a parked car and say it's fast, you think it's fast because you think of fast as acceleration. But, oh, oh, so fast means acceleration. But however, it doesn't. If a car is traveling past you at 50 miles an hour and 50, that car, that car's going way too fast. Oh, shoot. That means that fast in our common parlance means either acceleration or velocity. Aristotle did not clearly differentiate between velocity and acceleration. Most of us do not clearly differentiate between velocity and acceleration. But if you want to go anywhere in physics, if you want to do well, just make sure that they're separate. Get the definitions in your head. You'll do a whole lot better. Acceleration, a couple quick notes on that one. It is the rate of change of velocity. This is all definition related. So velocity is speed with direction. And if you change your speed or your direction and your direction, you have a change of velocity, so you accelerate. This is our definition here. So if you hit the gas pedal, everybody's oh, that that's acceleration. Gas pedal is acceleration, right? But then you hit the brake pedal and you're like, oh, that, that's, that's totally deceleration. Stop. Don't do that. This is not acceleration versus deceleration. 
They're both acceleration according to our definition. This is the definition here. You have to get the definition here correct. Increasing speed, gas pedal, that's acceleration. Decreasing speed, brake pedal, that's acceleration also. Definition related. And it turns out that turning also is acceleration. Our definition here, gas pedal, brake pedal, steering wheel, all of those are accelerations. Just get it in your head. So you're traveling along in a, in a straight line at 30 miles an hour and then you turn, maintaining the 30 miles an hour, you're accelerating according to our definition. So get these things in your head, keep the compare, contrast, use that to help you memorize and just go back again and again and again in the coming months as you are learning physics to learn it well. Thanks for watching our speed, velocity, acceleration video. Let's keep on learning physics.